Welcome once again right now in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This whole chapter is about love. What a topic this is because you know it is such a buzzword today and you know there's so much to say about this. Love as it is portrayed in the scriptures. If you ask 10 people what love means, you're going to get 10 different answers because you know love is hard to define so we must ask the question. God, how do you define love? How does the Bible define love? Let's get into it. The Apostle Paul writes here, If I speak with the languages of men and of angels, but don't have love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Just last session, we came from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In that chapter, Paul talks a lot about spiritual gifts. And you know, he goes through a lot of the spiritual gifts and he ends off that chapter. And by the way, when Paul wrote it, he didn't write in chapters and verses. You know, they were added in later by the scholars, okay? So Paul wrote it all as one continuous letter. There was no chapters, no division of chapters and verses when it was originally written. But the last verse of chapter 12, Paul ends off by saying, I will show you a more excellent way. So he talked about the spiritual gifts. He talked about faith. He talked about gifts of healing. He talked about prophecy. He talked about speaking in tongues. But he said, in the end, I will show you a more excellent way. And he comes right into what we're reading right now. You know, he says, if we speak with languages of men, in other words, languages that we find on earth, and even the languages of angels, but don't have love, we're just like a sounding brass. In other words, we're just like a trumpet or a tuba, you know, or a trombone or a clanging cymbal. In other words, you're just making noise and there's no actual meaning, depth behind it. Paul goes on to say, if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but don't have love, I am nothing. What an awesome thing to say. So Paul is really, really ramping up here. What does quote unquote love in the scriptures really mean? Does it mean what a lot of people use the word love for today? Verse three, if I give away all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but don't have love, it profits me nothing. Yes, it is possible to go through all the motions, to do everything you're supposed to do, but not really from the heart. You see, God commands us to give to the poor, but obviously it's not talking about just being a robot and just saying, oh yeah, I'll reluctantly give to the poor. I'll do it because, well, I'm supposed to do it. No, God wants it to be much deeper than that. And here as we scroll up, verse four, he says, love is patient and is kind. You know, a lot of quote unquote love today is not really love according to God. It is lust. It is sexual. It is not really love. Real love is patient. And you know, a lot of people, they talk about love a lot, but they really don't have good, solid patience in their character. Love is patient and is kind. Love doesn't envy. Wow, that's a big one. Real love is not envious of anything. Love doesn't brag and is not proud. Real, true love is the opposite of pride. This is what the scriptures teach us. True love as God sees it. Now, I, it's time for us to really get serious with God and say, God, it doesn't matter what we feel. It doesn't matter what we think. We want to know, oh God, what you think and what you feel. It's not about us. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about you. It's about us sacrificing our life. It's about us sacrificing our desires and our lusts and really doing what you want, oh God. And you know, when people really have a wonderful and powerful life-changing experience with God, a lot of definitions change in their life. What they used to call happy is not happy anymore. What they used to call joy, they all of a sudden realize 
That is really not true joy. I mean, once you really, really experience the joy of the Lord, then you can say, well, the joy of the world is really vain and empty and, and, and really meaningless and shallow. Well, the joy of God is different. And same with love. When you really, really come to that place of revelation, when you're in the dark and you have some of your senses about you, you can hear a little bit, you might be able to feel a little bit, but all of a sudden you find the light switch, you find the Word of God, and the Spirit of God comes in your life, and you flick that switch, you make that sacrifice, and boom, all of a sudden you see. And you see that what you used to call love, and what your friends used to call love, and what the celebrities used to call love is not real true love all of a sudden you see what true love really is love doesn't brag and is not proud love is humble humility is one of the most valuable virtues of all and you must have humility in order to walk with God as it says in Micah what does God require of you what does he want from you he wants you to do justly do what's right do what he says do his commandments to love mercy and to walk in pride no 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 to walk in humility to walk humbly before the Lord your God Love doesn't brag and is not proud, doesn't behave itself inappropriately. Wow, there's a lot of people today who use that word love quite a bit and boy are they ever inappropriate. Doesn't seek its own way. True love is against selfishness, does not seek its own way, is not provoked. Wow, true love is not provoked. How many people today, if you just go up to them and say, you know what, you're sinning, what you're doing is wrong. Oh, you'll see how provoked they get. They'll get more than provoked. They'll get irate. And in many times, rage. Takes no account of evil. Love takes no account of evil. Man, when someone does something against you, when someone says, oh, you are sinning, you're doing what's wrong, you don't go off and get all provoked and angry and you know impatient about it. You are humble. And you say, oh, I don't even notice. I don't even notice that because of love. I take no account of what I would think is evil. Doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? It's the opposite of righteousness. What is righteousness? It is the state of being right in God's sight, according to God's rules, regulations, and word. So true love does not enjoy unrighteousness. Something that God says not to do, you don't enjoy it. If God says don't do it, if God says he doesn't like it, true love does not rejoice in that. True love does not enjoy sin, but rejoices with the truth. How many people today do not want to hear the truth? They do not want to hear the truth. You know, somebody said the thing that you desperately need to know is the thing that you are trying to avoid. A lot of people don't want to hear the facts. Facts have become hate speech. Facts. They don't want to hear the facts anymore. They just want to go by the feelings, okay? Listen, it's very important to know the facts. If you know the facts, you can save yourself from a lot of trouble. Indeed, you can save yourself from the wrath and the judgment of God because God is not going to wink at everything. You know what? God is not going to say, oh, hello, Hitler. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome into my kingdom. I love you so much. Oh, look at all the rewards you got here. I love you. Love bears all things. In other words, you are able to bear it. You don't need a safe space. Your safe space is with God. You don't need to be protected. God becomes your protection. You are able to bear all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. And you know a lot of people quote this to say, well, love never fails. You know, love wins, all this kind of stuff. Only God's love, okay? And you know it says in the scriptures, love according to God. God's definition of love is to obey God, not to follow your own instincts and lusts and desires. But where there are prophecies, they will be done away with. 
where there are various languages, in other words, where there are people who speak in tongues, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will be done away with. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when that which is complete has come, then that which is partial will be done away with little rabbit trail here you know a lot of false prophets use this verse to say well i can't i can't be accurate in everything i only see in part i only know in part it doesn't say you prophesy inaccurately it just says you prophesy in part there's a big difference between being inaccurate and prophesying in part verse 10 but when that which is complete has come in other words talking about the very end of the road then that which is partial will be done away with when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I felt as a child, I thought as a child. By the way, a lot of people today, they are still like that. There's a lot of people today. They might be 60, 70, 80 years old, but you know, they've never really matured. They are still like children. God doesn't want you to be like that. God wants you to mature, not to be an emotional and mental dwarf. Now that I've become a man, I have put away childish things. How much today we need men and not children. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Paul is speaking about when we will see Jesus face to face. Now I know in part, Paul says. Very good admission there. We read Paul's letters as if he knows everything perfectly, as if he's Isaiah or something, a prophet. He makes mistakes and he even says here he only knows partial. But then on that day, I will know fully, even as I was also fully known by God, that is. But now faith, hope and love remain. These three. The greatest of these is love. Don't forget love as God defines it, which is the opposite as the world defines it. It's about time you really seek God, seek his face, seek him, seek his ways. Don't rely on the world's definition. Don't even rely on your own definitions, how you have been cultured to define things. You need to pray. You need to read the scriptures and pray that you understand it as much as possible. Seek him. And if you do with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will surprise you and show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.